Welcome to Wisdom Trek with Gramps. I am Guthrie Chamberlain and we are on day 2470 of our trek. The purpose of Wisdom Trek is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, and to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. In today's Wisdom Nugget, we'll be diving into Psalm chapter 24 verses 1 through 10 from the New Living Translation. It is a powerful psalm that celebrates the sovereignty of God as King of all the earth. Psalm 24 is often associated with the entrance of the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, which represented the presence of God dwelling with His people. But it also speaks of the larger truths about God's ownership of the world, His holiness, and the triumph of His eternal kingdom. Let's begin by reading the entire psalm, then we'll unpack its rich meaning together. Psalm chapter 24, verses 1-10 through 10. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to Him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may climb to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessings and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship you in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up, ancient gates. Open up, ancient doors. And let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up, ancient gates, open up, ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of the heaven's armies, He is the King of glory. Psalm 24 opens with a majestic declaration of God's ownership over the entire earth. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to Him. This statement sets the foundation for the entire psalm. It reminds us that everything we see, touch, and experience in this world ultimately belongs to God. The natural world, the mountains, oceans, skies, and forests are all His creation. But it doesn't stop there. Everyone who walks in the earth, regardless of background, nationality, or belief, also belongs to God. David, the psalmist, attributes the ownership of God being the creator of all things. For he laid the earth's foundations on the seas and built it on the ocean's depths. This reflects the truth found in Genesis, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, bringing order to the chaotic waters. The entire universe came into being by his word, and therefore all creation is subject to his authority. What a humbling truth. We often fall into the trap of thinking that we own our possessions, our lands, and even our lives. But Psalm 24 reminds us that in all things, it belongs to the Lord. We are stewards of what He has created. This mindset shifts how we view our resources, relationships, and the environment. We are also called to care and honor what God has entrusted to us because it is all His. David then moves on to the grand declaration of God's sovereignty over creation to the question that penetrates the hearts of our relationship with Him. Who may climb the holy mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? This question reflects on the ancient practices ascending to the temple, which was often located on a hill or a mountain. For David, it was Mount Zion, where the Ark of the Covenant was brought to rest. But the more profound question is about approaching God Himself. Who is worthy to stand before the Lord and His holiness? Verse 4 gives us this answer. Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. This verse highlights the importance of both outward actions, our hands, and our inward motives, our hearts. God desires not only external righteousness, but also internal purity. It is not enough to simply go through the motions of religious duties. True worshipers are those whose lives are characterized by integrity, honesty, and undivided devotion to God. David also calls out two specific areas of purity which are required. Avoiding the worship of idols and living in the truth. Idolatry is not just about bowing to a physical statue. It's about anything that takes the place of God in our hearts. It could be money, power, success, or relationships. When we allow anything to become more important than God, we are engaging in idolatry. Similarly, living in truth means being honest and dealing with others and with ourselves. This verse challenges us to examine our own lives. Are our hands and our hearts pure? Do we worship God with sincerity and truth, or are we holding on to idols and falsehoods? The call to holiness is clear, but we'll see in the next verses that God also provides a mean for us to live in His presence. In verses 5 and 6, David continues describing the blessings that come from those who live righteously. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. 
Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Here we see a beautiful promise. The Lord will bless those who seek purity and truth. The greatest blessing is the privilege of being in a right relationship with God, the creator of the universe, the shepherd of our souls. This relationship is not something that we earn through our own efforts, but it is a gift from God, our Savior. He is the one who makes it possible for us to stand in His presence. The phrase, such people may seek you and worship in your presence, reminds us that those who pursue righteousness have an incredible privilege of drawing near to God. Worship is not an outward ritual. It is a heart response to the majesty and holiness of God. When we live lives of integrity, we are invited into a deeper relationship with the Lord, where we can seek Him, know Him, and experience His presence. In the final section of Psalm 24, it takes on a dramatic turn as David calls on the gates of the city to be open wide. Open up, O ancient gates, open up, O ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. This is a triumphant moment, a proclamation of the arrival of the King of glory. But who is the King of glory? David answers in verse 8, The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, invisible in battle. Here we see a powerful image of God as a victorious warrior. He is not only the creator and sustainer of all things, but he is also the mighty king who fights on behalf of his people. The Lord is invincible in battle. No enemy, force, or power can stand against him. His strength and might are beyond comprehension. David repeats his call in verse 9, reinforcing the urgency and the significance of the moment. Open up, O ancient gates, open up, ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. This repetition emphasizes that the importance of recognizing and welcoming the King of glory into our lives. We must open the gates of our hearts to allow God's presence to enter in. And again, David asks, Who is the King of glory? The answer is given in verse 10. The Lord of Heaven's armies, He is the King of glory. The title, The Lord of the Heaven's Armies, reminds us of God's vast power and authority. He commands not only the earthly forces, but also the armies of heavens. His reign is supreme, and His victory is certain. Psalm 24 is a powerful reminder of God's sovereignty, holiness, and kingship. From the opening declaration, The earth is the Lord's, to the triumph entry of the King of Glory, the psalm calls for us to recognize His majesty of our Creator and respond with lives of purity and worship. We are invited to climb the mountains of the Lord, to stand in His holy place, but only with clean hands and pure hearts. As we seek to live lives of integrity and truth, we are promised the blessing of a right relationship with God. Finally, Psalm 24 challenges us to open the gates of our hearts to the King's glory. He is strong, mighty, and invincible in battle. He is the Lord of the heaven's armies, and He desires to reign in our lives. As we conclude today's trek, I encourage you to reflect on these truths. Let's strive to live lives of purity and truth, trusting in God's strength and welcoming His presence into every part of our lives. Thank you for joining me today on this journey through Psalm 24. Until the next time, may you continue to seek God's wisdom, live with purpose, and walk in the light of God's truth. And if you found this podcast insightful, please subscribe and leave us a review. Then encourage your friends and family to join us and come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. As we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, Listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you next time for more Daily Wisdom.